Good morning and welcome, and please be seated if you aren't already. It is fabulous to see you here. Um, and I really appreciate all the faculty, staff, and students who've come out in challenging weather. But I'm going to say, isn't it good luck if it rains on your wedding day? So it, this means you're going to have a great four years. So um, look on the bright side. So I'd love to welcome new members of the faculty. We are so glad you've joined us and hope that you're beginning to find your way around. Returning faculty, it is wonderful to see you all together in person. Um, I hope that uh, is a good, uh, good start to this year. Um, staff and other friends who braved the weather, um, I cannot possibly thank you and faculty adequately for all the work you've put in, not only to get us ready to open this year, but to get us through the past two and a half years. You have repeatedly gone above and beyond to keep our students on track and moving forward in their education and their lives. And I am deeply grateful. So can we have a round of applause for And of course, I want to offer a special welcome to the members of the class of 2026. I hope you've had a good first week in orientation, ASOP, ASOP uh, preseason practice, and most important, meeting new friends and learning your way around. My guess is at this point, your heads are spinning a bit and you're ready for classes to start and for us to get this show on the road. Convocation marks the formal introduction of your class into the Bates community and into the community of scholars. It also serves as a bookend to commencement four years later. Indeed, this morning and commencement, which for you will be in May 2026, are the only two times in your Bates career that you come together as a full class. Let me give you a sense of how this ceremony will proceed. After a few words from me, you will be welcomed by your student government co-presidents, Alexandra Ali Manning and Kush Sharma. Ali is a senior hailing from Sydney, Australia. She's a politics and rhetoric major with an anthropology minor. She is also a drummer and community liaison for the Bates Musicians Union. Kush Sharma is also a senior from New Delhi, India, majoring in theater. He has been a bonner leader at the Harvard Center and volunteered with the Lewiston High School robotics team and with Rosati Leadership Academy, a local, a local after school soccer program. Following their remarks, we will have the convocation address delivered by Daniel Rara Crichton, professor of economics. In recent years, we have revived an earlier tradition of asking the outgoing senior class the previous uh, spring to choose a professor to speak at the incoming first year convocation. In effect, Professor Rare Crichton is a gift from the class of 2022 to you, the class of 2026. They chose very well. Professor Rare Crichton has been a member of the Bates faculty since 2008. He has also worked as a research economist at the World Bank. He is a macroeconomic a macroeconomist who works on fiscal and monetary policy, international finance, and applied econometrics. Finally, at the end of the ceremony, Brittany Longsdorf, our multi-faith chaplain, will lead us in a benediction, after which we will process out as we processed in, led by the mace bearer and our faculty marshals. There will then be a brief ceremony in the Gomes Chapel honoring those members of our community who died during this past year. Before I turn the podium over to Ali and Kush and then Daniel, I'd like to say a few words to the class of 2026. Those of you who've been on campus for a few days have probably noticed the distinctive Bates custom. It is most obvious as you enter commons, it is very simple and it quickly becomes second nature. If you're walking into commons and you hear someone coming in behind you, you hold the door, catching it for them or holding it open to let them walk through ahead of you. 
I noticed this practice when I first came to campus 10 years ago to be introduced as the incoming president of Bates, and it blew me away. I think we would all agree that there aren't many places you go these days where people hold the door for some, someone they don't know. So it is meaningful that it happens here because this simple gesture of holding the door for someone is a gesture of openness and connection. The holder and the holdee typically make eye contact. They often exchange a brief greeting and one usually says thank you to the other. So why am I belaboring this point? For two reasons. First, it seems to me that we are living in a society and a world where it is rarely about holding the door for one, for one another. More often these days, it's about slamming the door, literally and metaphorically, or on social media. Slamming the door in the face of someone we don't know or don't agree with, or who looks different from us. Colleges are always, to a certain extent, microcosms of the larger society of which we are a part, but it is important that we not mindlessly incorporate into our own ways of doing things the worst values and practices of the world around us. The second reason I'm har harping on our hold the door custom is that openness and connection are what your college experience is meant to be all about. It is what you sign up for when you choose to come to a liberal arts college like Bates. So I wanna take a couple minutes to think with you about what we can do to sustain a culture of openness and connection in a world where polarization and intolerance are too often the norm. As human beings, we are defined by our geography, our identities, and our personal histories, which tend to be mostly givens when you're growing up. But as we get older and start to make our own choices, we are increasingly defined by what matters to us, what we're interested in, what we pay attention to, and how we choose to spend our time and our labor. The patterns that emerge from our accumulated choices are different for each of us. I know one student here at Bates, for instance, who will blow off class in a heartbeat the day after a storm and pull on his wetsuit with one goal in mind to get to the nearest beach to catch the big waves the storm has churned up. On the other hand, there are probably more of you who, like me when I was a student, sadly, would never miss a class unless you were on your deathbed because your courses and academic success are your priority and you wouldn't want to do anything to jeopardize this. For other students, it's sport to being part of a team that matter most or music and singing in the choir or an acapella group or playing in a band. Or hiking and heading north to Baxter State Park to climb Mount Katahdin or south to Boston or New York, New York to get a taste of the big city. We each carry within us a range of identities, interests, choices, and ways of being that coexist in different proportions and levels of intensity. The infinite number and combinations of these characteristics and choices that make each of us who we distinctively are give a college community like Bates a richness that deepens learning and joy and connection. Or as our mission states, it provides the wherewithal for us to, quote, engage the transformative power of our differences. That's the theory, at least. In fact, unlocking the richness of human variety that makes a community like the one we think we have or wish to have here at Bates does not happen automatically. On the contrary, it is easy to notice difference without engaging it and default to hanging with people who look like us and think like us. If you and your roommate come from entirely different worlds and tend to have different interests and divergent views on politics, it is awfully easy to start, stop talking to one another and go your separate ways. If you're an athlete with an intense pre practice schedule, it's natural to fall into a pattern of eating with your teammates, hanging out with your teammates, and next year living with your teammates. If you're an international student trying to figure out the nuances of the American liberal arts tradition, it is natural to stick with other international students who are also trying to decode this strange world you have all landed in. 
In short, it is easy to build your life around the identities, inherited or chosen, that set you apart from many of your fellow students. You, get a lot more, you will get a lot more out of the next four years, however, if you focus on being open and looking for connections where they may not be obvious. As students early in your journey to adulthood, you have two powerful tools, curiosity and grace, that are ready to hand to help you with this quest. In fact, it is your day job as students to ask questions in search of truth and understanding and to receive with grace and further curiosity the answers, whatever form they take. You're not supposed to know all the answers at this point in your life. In fact, you never are. You're not supposed to be certain of your views. You're not supposed to be set in your ways. You're in college to learn, in your classes to be sure, but also from every aspect of your experience. Bates aims to educate the whole person, but this can only be accomplished if we all encounter others in their wholeness. Think, for example, about the fact that we have a national election coming up this November for every congressional seat in a third of the Senate and for many state and local offices. Some students will spend dozens of hours through the Harvard Center working to get Bates students registered to vote, educate them on key races and policy issues, and encourage them to actually cast their vote, whether in Lewiston or in their home districts. Other students may choose not to vote at all. They may have decided to sit out this election. On the surface, these students are in totally different camps when it comes to electoral politics. So now let's suppose that the student determined to vote and the student determined to sit out the election decide to talk to each other. They may learn that they are taking these contrary positions for exactly the same reason. They each believe that Washington politics at the moment are polarized, dispiriting, and completely dysfunctional. One person thinks voting is pointless, given how bad things have gotten, and one person thinks voting has never been more urgent. Maybe one will persuade the other, or maybe they will never agree on whether or not they should vote in this particular election. If they take time to open themselves up and dig below the surface, however, they may learn that, regardless of their specific political affiliations, they are both obsessed with politics, love to debate policy issues, and share a deep concern about the state of our democracy. In short, if they follow their natural curiosity to probe and learn, and give each other the grace to move beyond surface differences, they may well find common ground. These tools and habits are equally uh, powerful when an issue comes up in class or student government on a team or in a friend group. Students, you are coming of age in times that are both momentous and contentious. It is up to all of us who work and teach and learn on this campus to engage with each other in ways that model a culture and discourse that does not stop at the what of apparent differences, but rather go deeper to understand the why of differing values and viewpoints and the how of finding common ground. Students, here is my wish for you. As you settle in and start to get comfortable with this place where you've landed, I hope that you will embrace the tradition of holding the door for the people you are privileged to share this campus with for the next four years. The door of commons, to be sure, but also the doors of your hearts and minds. If you challenge yourselves to do this, you will learn more, you will have more interesting friends, and college will be a lot more fun. Class of 2026, we welcome you to Bates, and let's have a fabulous year.